Hey Wolfpack and welcome back. I hope all is well. Today, we're reading My Relationship is Made of Three Parts. Me, My Boyfriend, and His Demon by Her Creation. But first, which unsolved murder fascinates you the most? Comment down below. With that said, whether you're sitting around a campfire, on the night shift, or even lying in bed, let my voice soothe your nightmares. My relationship is made out of three parts. First, there's me. I'm just a plain thing. There's nothing of much interest to be said about me. Then, there's my boyfriend, James. I met him when I was in a real dark place in my life a couple years ago. It felt silly to say, but he saved me in a time when I was completely alone, struggling to find my way out, struggling to find myself. He's handsome and strong, and he loves me more than I thought I ever deserved. In my relationship, there's me, there's him, and finally, there's the demon. James says he's been possessed by a demon since he was little, and he's just learned to live with it. He says the demon only comes out when it's provoked, or rather, when I provoke it. I don't like the demon very much at all. It happens the same way each time. James and I will begin arguing over something that, I suppose, doesn't really even matter. Something trivial. James will later say, and I'll do or say something to trigger the demon. Then, James just changes as the demon takes over. His skin starts to wrinkle all over. His lips shrivel up and lose their color. His teeth sharpen to fine points. He'll blink his eyes and when he opens them back up, they're black as a void. That's how I know James is gone and the demon is there. I know better than to fight with a demon. I squeeze my eyes shut and listen to whatever it has to say. Just push through it. Anything to make it go away faster. I pull my knees tight to my chest and try to focus on James. James leaving flowers on the counter just because. James holding me close while we sleep. James doing anything other than this. But I know it's not really James. That it's the demon. Because he always comes back when the demon is done. I know it's okay to open my eyes once I feel James wrapping himself around my shaking body. Rocking me in his arms. Gently brushing away my tears. Whispering a gentle shh in my ear. I'm sorry, love. It's over. He's gone. He'll say. And I know I'm finally safe again. I was scared the first time the demon came out. We'd barely just started dating when it happened. It was my birthday, and we were getting ready to go out for drinks with some of my friends. I finished my makeup, then came out to the bedroom in my new dress and gave James a twirl. Absolutely giddy. James scoffed and sneered. What? You're wearing that? You can't be serious. It's too short and too tight. I thought he must be joking, so I laughed. I never had a boyfriend tell me anything like that before. That's when I met the demon for the first time. I tried to run, but it blocked the door with its large frame, hissing. You mean to make a fool out of me? It only went away once I stopped protesting back against its harsh accusations. Stopped trying to prove a useless point. I learned quick to just let it happen and let it go afterwards. It's not James's fault, anyway. And he's always sorry when it happens. And I mean, very apologetic. He breaks down as soon as it's over, condemns himself and his actions. He says that the demon twists his words, makes him spit poison that he would never say himself. The demon roars, You made me frickin' hack your computer because I know you're cheating around on me. Who is he? And James would say later, I just wanted to make sure nobody is taking advantage of your sweet nature, love. You're a damn fool if you can't see that he just wants to tear you apart with his little prick and throw you away like the garbage we both know you are. Turns into, I know he's your best friend, but I just don't trust him. I know he has bad intentions with you, love. You're too kind and innocent to see him for what he is. The demon growls. There's a piece of every man that wants to frick and kill every woman on the goddamn planet. And James would say later, I know how men are. It's an uncomfortable truth. 
but all I want is to protect you from them. Nobody will ever love you, you're a worthless piece of shit, turns into. I've never loved anyone like I love you, and I couldn't stand to lose you. I don't like the demon, but I love James, so I stay. James tells me it's our fate to be together, that we need each other because I'm the only one strong enough to stick by him while the demon is in control of his mind and his body. And he says I need him because he's the only one who can fix me. He says I'm broken, that I've been damaged by other men and their bad intentions. He says he's the only one who can protect me from them. He tells me that he'll kill anyone if they ever try to hurt me, and the demon says the same thing as well. It scares me when either of them say it. James and I fought again last night. He installed a key logger on my computer and caught me talking to my best friend, the one with bad intentions. Over the years, I've severed contact with all friends and family, and I was just feeling so lonely, so out of touch. So, I told him that. James transformed within seconds, his flesh shriveling as he bared his pointed teeth and the orbs of his eyes blacking out. You think you're lonely? The demon scowled, grunting. A glass flew across the room, crashing into the wall, shattering on impact. You know what? Tucking my knees close to my chest, I pressed my eyes shut as tight as I could. Your company is freaking far from satisfying. What with your goddamn stupid rants about inequality, this injustice that... It mocked in a patronizingly high-pitched whining voice. You ever stop to think you're just making all that shit up? Or maybe things are the way they are for a reason? To keep you safe? Balling my hands in a tight fist, I dug my fingernails into my palm, hard, reminding myself to think of James. Just think of the good times. Just think of him and he'll come back. Just how many times do I have to tell you this until it gets through your frickin' thick, fat skull? He is not your friend. All he wants from you is what every man wants from every woman, and what he wants is mine. The demon seethed. It must have been close to me then, because I could feel its hot breath on my face, could smell its stench of rot. Don't look. Stay quiet. Think of James. I commanded myself internally. Yet, as much as I tried to think of him, and the good times, all I could think of was James laying out my outfits for me, James passing me the short invite list he'd made up for my birthday party, James swearing up and down that I'm always too sensitive. I attempted in desperation to resist the thoughts, to push them out, but I was hit with a sudden headache, a severe and searing radiating pain from the front of my skull. Yelping, I brought my hands to my forehead to soothe the ache, my palms rested on two tender lumps protruding from my skull. What the hell? I cried, opening my eyes and gazing down at my hands, recoiling in terror as my fingernails grew several inches before my eyes, pointed and yellowing. The hell is wrong with you? The demon scowled, pointing an onyx glare in my direction, and then came the rage, burning, bright, intense, and freeing. What the hell is wrong with me? I screamed, voice suddenly intense and piercing like a banshee's. My entire skull ignited in pain once more with the sensation of my flesh ripping. You're what the hell is wrong with me? The demon opened its pit of a mouth to respond, its fangs dripping, but I cut it off with a blaring screech. The framed photographs on the wall trembled and rattled loudly against the wall. One toppled from its position, its glass covering splintering as it collided with the floor. Screw you and screw you! I yelled, infuriated. Just shut up, please! Just as abruptly as he shifted into a demon, James reappeared in his true form, his mouth gaping in awe, maybe fear. Love, what's happened to you? What the hell do you mean? I shot back, my breaths coming heavy and gruff. For once, he said nothing. I stomped over to the closet mirror and wailed at the sight of myself. No, not myself. Different and wrong. Two black, gnarled horns had burst through my forehead, the fresh wounds oozing dark, viscous blood. My nails had essentially morphed into claws, and all color had left my eyes, now just white and vacant. Oh, God! I choked. 
I'm a monster. Overcome with guilt and misery, I collapsed back onto the bed. I felt the horns twist back inside. Felt myself regain control again. Felt myself become me again. James crept hesitantly over to the bed, perching next to me on the mattress. No, love, you aren't a monster. You're strong, but you are damaged, and it looks like you have a demon too. Probably put inside you by one of those guys with their bad intentions. He sighed, pushing my bangs back so he could see my face. I always hated it when he did that. It's fate, love, for us to be together. I will fix you, and I will protect you from the demon inside of you. The only one who understands what it's like to have one. So, only I can save you from it. Save you from yourself. A part of me always doubted we were fated to be together. But, no longer. If I truly am the monster, the demon, that I saw in the mirror, it must be so. My relationship is made of four parts now. Me, my boyfriend, and our demons. Thanks for listening, Wolfpack. If you want to submit your own story, the links for my email and subreddit will be down below. I've also created a Discord, so if you want to join that, the link will be in the description down below as well. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And with that said, have beautiful nightmares, and I will see you next time.